Crystal Flare 101. Welcome back to the channel. We have another Transformers toy review, and today we'll be looking at the Walmart exclusive Generation 1 reissue Starscream. Now, this figure was released in late 2018. This was a this is a Walmart exclusive, and the original suggested retail was $34.97. Now, before I go any further, let's have a quick look at the packaging, shall we? Let's take a look at the packaging for this reissue of Starscream. First off, on the top we have that classic Generation 1 Transformers font and logo, along saying whether he converts from robot to plane and back. The bottom shows that he's a Decepticon Air Commander, along with his name. To the right, the classic Generation 1 artwork for Starscream, along with the top of the box showing his transformation process. Then we go to the left side of the packaging, standard product shots. Now, as far as the reverse side of the packaging is concerned, top left we have that classic Transformers logo in purple. And the top right where it says it is a world of constant change. On the bottom right we have his little file card showing his function, his bio, along with his text bag, which we can actually see on this one. Also showing where he is an authentic Transformers product in a classic Hasbro um, logo. Also that classic Generation 1 artwork on the other side is the same as the other side. The bottom showing more product shots of the character. And with that being shown, let's get straight to the review. And now let's have a quick 360 of Starscream. Now, as some of you may know, I am a big, big nut when it comes to Starscream. Not only is it the character that I love, I love the fact he constantly tries to usurp Megatron for control. I think the only exception to that rule would be for the Michael Bay movies. There was a hint of it in Revenge of the Fallen, but it was more of a nod to it. That was it. But aside from that, um, I'm a big big aviation guy and the fact he actually trans the original transforms into a mcdonald douglas f-15 eagle and this is my single favorite jet ever is the mcdonald douglas f-15 now just like with optimus i figure i'd go ahead and show you how he looks before stickers get applied this is how he comes out of the box um, he has some stickers already applied, namely on the wings and on the vertical stabilizer. I believe those were already applied just because some may have a little more trouble getting these applied properly. Um, and then it seems like they're off ever so slightly. Um, on my example here, that's just how it seems. But, with that being said, um, like with Optimus, let's look at the uh, little mini instruction booklet and with a little sticker sheet. And here they are, fresh out of the packaging. This is something I already do not like. Is I just took this out of the packaging. And it's literally folded over like this, especially with the sticker sheet. That, to me, is unacceptable. I mean, it really is. Because I honestly hope that doesn't um, compromise the sticker sheet itself. Let's go ahead and get a better look. I have had this figure now for at least three months. I've had, had this for at least three months. And this is my first time actually getting, getting the full with him. Doesn't seem like that sticker's affected. Don't seem like it. Although I can feel that obvious crease. I really hope that doesn't affect these particular stickers. But 
just like with Optimus, this does have a shiny metallic silver background. I mean, the stickers look good. The stickers overall just look good. I just hope these two, actually these four up here don't get affected. Now, as far as the transformation is concerned, well, excuse me, the instruction manual, I mean, let's get a look at that. I mean, it's just a very simple little booklet. I've not owned an original G1 Starscream. However, um, I will bring another Starscream out after I get them all stickered up. And apparently, his 10 steps for the transformation where the stickers go on the robot and on jet mode. But, according to this, he's 10 steps to transform. I mean, they don't seem like 10 steps for me. Um, there is one little thing about the packaging I do want to show off real quick before I actually get him stickered up. And there are two things I want to point out uh, with the packaging for Starscream here. Um, one of which I thought was interesting, which is if you notice these actually have pointed corners, little sharp corners. When they did Optimus Prime, they actually transitioned that from the pointed corners to this rounded off corner, which I want to say was uh, on some of the original G1 boxes. Uh, speaking of original uh, G1 boxes, mine might not be original, but something something is. As I had someone point this out on my Optimus video review, which is this little test that's right up here. Um, it's been mod it's been changed just a little bit. I didn't notice this till I was pointing out that I remember, hey, I have a uh, KO box for a G1 Reflector. And let's go ahead and bring that box out here. There we go. Right up here it says, it is a world of constant change. And right over here, it says, it is a world transformed. Now, I don't know that if this slight little tweak right here is because of the current political correctness climate that is going on right now, which, frankly, I really don't care about. I'm not going to go into that. But, um, I didn't... I didn't really knows that until it was pointed out to me. Maybe that was done for legality reasons. I don't know. Again, maybe it was done, maybe that was changed just a little bit to, for this right here. Just to avoid some, just to make it a little more PC, which I don't care for PC. I, re, I don't care for political correctness whatsoever. I really, really don't. Um, I mean, it's not much, but it is a little change. And as I stated, they changed the robot points from basically the originals to the authentic Transformers little uh, marking. Now with that, uh, let's go ahead and get Starscream stickered up and take a better look. And now that we got Starscream all stickered up, Let's go ahead and get a better look at him. Now, I decided to go ahead and remove the missile launchers slash null rays for Starscream. Make it, make, just to make this look a little sleeker. Now, this is looking more like Starscream. Because before, it was just sticker here and here on both of, the, both of these, but now we got stickers on various areas of the figure, including on the feet. 
I mean, just as with the previous reissues of this, the vast majority of this is plastic. However, this bomb portion right down through here is still die cast, it's still metal. The wheels are metal. This still has the heat rub feature, just like on the originals. Just told you right there, you can go ahead and see it's a star screen. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and do that. There we go. Just like on the originals. Now, the main complaint I've really been hearing about this reissue, I do mean the main thing I have heard people complain about is that there's too much of a gap between the wing and the body of the plane. Well, I don't have an original G1 Starscream. I don't have my Japanese Takara reissue on hand. However, um, for me, I have the next best thing, which is I have my G2 Starscream. That way we can compare and contrast. Now, it seems to me, because this one was released in 1993, when G2 kicked off, um, seems to me like, almost like that's normal. Maybe it's a little different on an original, original G1. Um, I believe it was this way on my Takara reissue. As soon as I can get it, I can get a better idea. But, I mean, it just seems to me like that's almost normal. I could be mistaken. But, aside from that, uh, it's an absolutely gorgeous looking F-15. And the canopy on it does open, just like on the original figure. Because this was originally intended for Takara's Diaclone line. This was intended to see a little pilot minifigure. And this mold has been in constant use since 1983 in Japan, 1984 in the United States. Matter of fact, something else I figured I'd go ahead and point out is that down here where the copyright information is, it reads Tomai, made in China. Uh, copyright 2017 Hasbro. Now my G2. Uh, matter of fact, let me look at it real quick off camera. Uh, mine reads 1992 Hasbro. All rights reserved. Main China. Um, I believe the originals and the Japanese reissues will say. Uh, copyright 1983, 1984. The original originals say made in Japan. The reissues will say made in China. All right. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and transform this from F15 mode to robot mode. Now, as far as transformation from F15 to robot mode, I'll go ahead and cover that. I've covered it with the Tatara Encore reissue. If you haven't seen that, I'll cover it here. First off, remove the nose gear. Once he's in robot mode, there is no place to store this. Just make note where you place it, because it is an easy piece to lose. Place mine over here. What you'll want to do, you can either remove the wings, or just rotate them like so. That's typically what I do on my G2. Or my, or my Encore. Snap the nose down. Then, from down here, push the arms out. This is my first time transforming this particular figure, by the way. Since that popped up, popped off. I'm just going to leave it there. And this thing is actually quite stiff. And I said, it's the first time this particular figure is being transformed. Alright. 
of the nose. Go ahead and pop it down. Swing the nose towards the body, like so. Swing it down. Bring up the head. Rotate around, like so. Go ahead and flip the feet down. The horizontal stabilizers, fold them like so. Next are the fist. Here's the left fist. And here is the right fist. They will simply snap into place. Then after that, simply equip him with his null rays. Or the missile launchers, whichever you want to call them. Alright, and right there we have... G1 Star Scream and all his glory. And now let's have a better look at Star Scream's robot mode. I know this looks absolutely nothing like the like his cartoon counterpart, but hey, you gotta bear in mind this figure came out before the Transformers came out. Um, originally, this was supposed to be basically a piloted mech, having it turned into an F-15. But, I, for the most part, it's very, it's, the mold itself is the original G1 character. The only things they've changed around, honestly, are... Mainly the mi two types of missiles this comes with. These are comically enlarged. And these were originally at Yalon or so. They're really, really short and stubby. They made the post for this this long to make sure the this did become a possible choking hazard. Now, the main appeal of this particular star screen is this accessory right here. Yes, he comes with a little holdable Megatron. And I thought I had seen this accessory one point before. Um, so I decided to look it up, and sure enough, I was right. This particular Megatron accessory did come with a previous G1 reissue star screen. This was part of the Japanese exclusive the Transformers Collection line, which were the ones that came with the reissue of the original figure, and on top of that, uh, came with like a little thick bit, thick book format. They were typically color accurate to the original characters from the cartoon or anime version, as they would be labeled uh, as in Japan. Now, what's interesting is that that version of Starscream, not only did he come with this Megatron, not only did he come with these particular fists, because these are the fists that came with that reissue of Starscream. I'm going to be trying to provide pictures right up here of that particular set. But it also came with one more accessory. Um, and to be honest, um, I kind of wish they would have included this accessory either with this or with the Optimus that Walmart recently got that I've reviewed here. And that is, this Starscream also came with an Optimus Prime Fist that could hold this Megatron. And that would have been a really, really cool accessory to have. I mean, imagine aside from, you know, Starscream here holding it, imagine if you got, maybe not necessarily the 
Walmart reissue of Optimus. If you had a G1 Optimus in general, then you could have him hold Megatron. That would just be so cool. Now, as far as how this, how this figure is able to hold this Megatron, it's simple. They made it very simple. The top half breaks apart. Now, you could have him hold Megatron in either hand. I typically go with the right hand because that's generally which hand Starscream or any of the other Decepticons you use. And this paired hole goes into this paired right here. Simple as that. And this looks like something that could have passed, you know, for back in the 80s. If I guess if they could have thought that out. But this just works really, really well. It really does. This, for me, is the highlight of this particular reissue. Is this accessory. For me, this is really the main reason to get this particular version of Starscream. Now, if you have a G1 Starscream, or if you have a previous reissue Starscream, um, I wouldn't see much of an incentive to get this one, unless you just like collected Starscream. Um, I, me, I'm, me personally, I'm a big Starscream fanatic. So, if a Starscream comes out, you can expect me to get it. But, um, for $34.97, 36 I can't remember which it is, that this retailed for, um, I feel like this was actually well worth it. Um, especially considering secondary market, what pre what the previous reissues are going for. I mean, especially an original G1 Starscream. What they're going for. So for me, this is a economical way to be able to add a G1 Starscream to your collection. But this right here, for me, is the reason to pick up this particular Starscream. Also, I want to say this one is actually um, color accurate to the original toy. Uh, this particular Starscream is. But, as I previ previously said, if you're a fan of Starscream, or if you don't have this particular mold, then this is well worth picking up for the nearly 35 bucks he retailed for. And on top of that, this is a economical way of being able to get this accessory for this figure. Not only the accessory, but also, oh, also the fist that are required to actually hold him. So if you're able to find one of these up for around 35 or so, preferably less, I would highly suggest getting him, especially if you don't have him. He may not look accurate to his um, cartoon self, but he's still a fun figure. I mean, he's still a nice little, nice, nice little display piece to have in the collection. So if you can find them, you don't have them, I, I would highly recommend getting them. But that'll wrap up my review on the Walmart exclusive G1 reissue Starscream. Be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.